A decade of research has led me to rediscover a profoundly simple truth. The human body is the product of a complex and multi-billion year long evolutionary experiment. Some of our ancestors stayed as they were. Others multiplied and mutated, eventually swimming, walking, developing organs, and the first glimmers of complex thought. One of the many basic cellular processes that evolved in those single cell ancestors was vesicle formation, which has been elaborated by evolution into the human synapse. So what does this mean for medicine and the search for new drugs? Surprisingly, many drugs affect human tissues in a number of complicated ways that existing pharmacology doesn't even begin to explain. And that's where yeast come in. Using an approach I've dubbed evolutionary pharmacology, my lab studies living fossils and their connections to complex diseases, in particular brain diseases, like depression, which are still poorly understood at the cellular level. Over the last five years, my lab at Princeton University has studied the yeast cell reaction to the antidepressant Zoloft. Zoloft increases levels of serotonin between nerve cells by jamming serotonin reuptake transporter proteins, thereby boosting well-being, or so goes the prevailing wisdom. However, the hypothesis that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance is an oversimplification. It cannot explain why the effects of antidepressants on serotonin are fast, minutes to hours, yet antidepressants don't kick in for weeks or months. In a recent paper in the journal PLOS One, we found that Zoloft accumulates in yeast cell membrane, a bit startling, since yeast cells lack serotonin altogether. This accumulation changed the shape of specific vesicle-forming membranes. Might the gradual accumulation of Zoloft in human brain cell membranes explain the time lag in antidepressant effects? Might it be involved in the growth of new neurons, as has been found in lab rats chronically exposed to antidepressants? By comparing drug responses between us and our very distant cousins, we can discover novel, medically actionable drug targets. This is evolutionary pharmacology. It's a new way of thinking, studying the very small and very old to develop very large and very new ideas. But like all science, it needs creativity and collaboration. That's why I've opened up my lab to the internet. To participate and learn more about evolutionary pharmacology, visit my new modular open science platform at pearlsteinlab.com where I share data, discuss results and ideas, and engage with colleagues, collaborators, and the public.